my Bloody Valentine 2009 movie review. The small mining town of Harmony is struck by tragedy when Tom Jensen Ackles, who might as well be referred to as Dean Winchester, because really he Dean Winchester is his way through the entire movie, through his inexperience causes a mining accident. Five people die because of that. There is one survivor, Harry Warden. One year later, on Valentine's Day, for no good reason, he wakes up from the coma he was in, and he murders 22 people. He is stopped, and the movie picks up ten years later, when on the ten-year anniversary, Valentine's Day again, the murders begin again, and the killer is yet again wearing the mining gear with the gas mask that makes him sound like Darth Vader, and using a pickaxe, which is surprisingly strong, or maybe the people in this movie are just made of jello. This is yet another of the recent horror remake, reboots, reimaginings, and it's actually one of the better ones. It might be the best one. Might be the best one that I've seen so far. Because for the things that it definitely does wrong, it does some really important things pretty right as well. As a slasher, it is genuinely exciting. The <laughs> terrible tendency of slashers to introduce a character only to have them be killed off minutes later is not that common of an occurrence here. You tend to get to know people before you see their gory, bloody demise. And that's the, the effects are pretty good, and there are some relatively creative kills here as well. It tends not to not to be as flashy as the reason, especially the Michael Bay horror reimaginings, and it genuinely is pretty scary. It builds a reasonable amount of atmosphere, and for using a certain amount of jump scares, it does tend to be quite effective, and it does not tend to cheaply set something up and then not follow through, again, like the Michael Bay horror movies. The characters start out seeming rather obnoxious, but as we get to know them, we find out that at least not all of them are completely obnoxious. We have Kerr Smith returning from, you know, I think Dawson's Creek. And he's the jackass that he tends to play in, at least the stuff I see him in anyway. You know, this Final Destination, he might just be really good at that. Returning to Jensen Ackles, he... I haven't seen him in a lot, but there's one thing that I know he does well, and that's being intense in the eyes, in the, you know, the, the way he uses his voice. He has a little bit of the Bale bat voice going, but he does it better. And the body language. The man is good at being intense, and that is put to good use in this movie. The overall plot is not bad, and almost sort of forms a coherent and almost satisfying story, in spite of a few missteps, which I'll get to. And the pacing is also quite good. I was never bored during this movie. 
it's granted at times it was because I was just enjoying things that I'm not sure were supposed to be funny, but and the scares do tend to work, even though there are a couple of silly setups. And this also goes to what may be a new low for slasher horror because of one particular character's utter stupidity when being you know, faced with what may or may not be Harry Warden returning to kill people for some reason. That's one thing. It could use some more of a motive, maybe. And there's one female character in this who is naked as she's being chased and just, yeah, you know, it's, we're used to women not wearing a lot when they're being chased. Maybe they'll even have some clothes torn off as they're being chased and or killed. But having them completely naked, yeah, it, new low. James King seems to be wanting to show off her bra a lot in this movie, possibly to remind people that in, in spite of her first name occasionally being spelled as James instead of Jane, Jane, Jamie, whatever, she is in fact a chick. Now, the missteps, the Valentine's Day anniversary date kind of thing with the movie. The date itself is not a bad idea in and of itself. The problem is the movie keeps trying to make something out of it, and it never actually does. The movie Valentine also has a Valentine's thing going, but it has a point there. If you watch the first 10 minutes of the movie Valentine, you'll totally get the whole, you know, there's, there's an actual point there. Here, it's just, as far as I understand, that was also the date in the original movie. You know, it was the 80s, I guess people just really wanted to connect their slasher killer to a certain date. You know, it was Friday the 13th, it was Halloween, it was Valentine's Day. The problem here is that it just, it has no bearing on anything in the movie, actually, but the filmmakers really want to, you know, still exploit that kind of thing. It would have been even better if this had actually been released on, you know, Valentine's Day, but yeah, check the IMDb page for that, you know, the trivia. The, in the original movie, I don't know, I haven't watched it yet. I wouldn't imagine that they make such a big deal out of it unless it actually also amounts to something. Here, we just have, you know, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but just in the first 15, 10, 15 minutes, you know, when we see Harry Warden's initial killing spree, he draws hearts out of blood on, you know, surfaces, and he removes the hearts of some of the people that he kills. I'm also not entirely sure how he manages to kill, you know, we, we see the aftermath of the hospital where he wakes up from a coma. Evidently, everyone just stood still and let him kill them. I'm also not entirely sure how exactly, you know, and he took his sweet time too, you know, there are bodies cut in half. Not entirely sure where he got such bloody weaponry. I mean, I get, okay, maybe like a scalpel or, I don't know, a fire axe or something, but it's a hospital. Where did he get the stuff to... Anyway, and he's removed hearts and, you know, stuff like that. And this doesn't amount to anything. And it, you know, it's not just that one scene. It keeps going through the movie. The 3D, I didn't watch this in 3D, but the movie doesn't make it a secret that it was made for 3D. And I can imagine watching in 3D is pretty effective. They constantly shove stuff directly at the camera. Well, not constantly. They often shove stuff at the camera. 
this doesn't ruin the viewing experience, not at all. And again, you know, if someone still has a chance to watch this in 3D, I could imagine that that would make it even more fun. And it is a fun movie to watch. If you like slashers and you want to watch a recent slasher, I'd say go with this one over plenty of the others. The acting is pretty reasonable. Some of the characters behave in kind of illogical ways, and not only in the chase and death scenes. And there are arguably one or two subplots that really don't go anywhere. With that said, at the same time, there is proper character development. There are, uh, is actually conflict other than, you know, the masked killer running around. And it's not the best, but it actually does add something to these characters. We do care more. There aren't a lot of death scenes where you don't at all care about the people in it. And you know, once again, usually when someone is being chased and or killed, you already know that character. You know, you spend at least five or ten minutes with them. It's not like they just appear and then they get killed. That does not happen very often in this movie. I'd say the twist is pretty good. I... I was surprised. I had a feeling it might be that, but that feeling only appeared near the end. And near the end, you really do, you know... I was really, you know, on the edge of my seat trying to figure out who the killer was and what exactly was going on. But yeah, I believe that's everything. So I couldn't tell you if it's as good, better, or worse than the original. But as its own thing, and this doesn't really... You know, as far as I understand it, it doesn't really follow the plot of the original all that closely. You know, Reimagining and everything. You can watch it completely as its own thing. And as its own thing, it's enjoyable enough. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.